scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. The presence of God is mighty in this place. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. And now, brethren, I commend you first to God, second to the world. I commend you first to God, then second to the world. I commend you. I transfer responsibility for the results in your life first to God. Like you transfer a small child and say, from now, take care of him. And God is saying, Paul is speaking and say, I commend you first to God, to, to the word. He says that that word is able, hmm, is able, does not outsource power from any other place. In itself, it is able to build you up. Number one. Number two, it says it is able to give. The word can give things to men. It is able to build you up. Then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. It says, I commend you first to God. Then I commend you to the word. It says that that word is able to build you. To build you means to translate you. To take you to a dimension higher than your prior experience. And then as a reward for staying, it says it will give you an inheritance. Something provable. Something demonstrable. That everyone will know that this one would only have come if a man met God and met his word. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I have come. I have come. To encounter God and encounter the world. I trust in the ability of the world to build me. It is able to build you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening. Please be seated. One of the things that I pray will continue to happen to us is that God by His Spirit will continue to grant us the comprehension of the value of the Word of God in the life of a believer. It's not enough to just believe that the Word of God is God's word you must believe that the word of God contains within itself an ability and that the word of God is able to make men if received it says he came to his own and his own received him not then it says but as many as received him anything received can be rejected is that true as many as received him, even to them that believed on his name, the Bible says he gave them power to become.
become power to become nobody is made by default my brothers and my sisters listen Saul does not become Paul just by default there is a system in the kingdom that makes men there's nothing wrong with the way you come except that if you are willing to engage in the systems of the kingdom then there is a guarantee that the word of God God who is the owner of the word and the word of God commended to you you know many times we talk about the word of God the power of the word but the truth is that we have not educated people enough to see the value in the word of God are we together now yes the Bible says in John chapter 1 the gospel of John chapter 1 the Bible says in the beginning listen was the word and it says the word was with God then it says the word was God it says that he was with God in the beginning now here's the part it says to him all things how many things now when the Bible tells you something made everything you should respect it are we together now yes that all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made without him without the word was not anything made that was made without the word was not any destiny that was made without the word was not any life that was made without the word was not any man of God that was made that means when you have the word you have the ability to manipulate anything created by the word are we together now when the bible tells you he wants to give you what created the heavens and the earth it means that he's giving you access is a scepter of dominion that with this word when he grants it unto you then you will be able to tame life and operate at a dimension and at a frequency that will dumbfound principalities and powers now truthfully speaking it may take a while you see because god is not a magician it's a system that means your participation is required but that line upon line my brothers and my sisters let me give you a guarantee and i tell you this in the name of the lord if you listen to the things that i teach you and you open up your heart in all sincerity to receive there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to put down your destiny it's a matter of time forget about the things you do not see and focus on what god is giving you what god is giving you is greater than any car you can buy trust me you must have something greater than material things to get material things you can't have something less than material things and then have these things god is if all god gives you now is a car and a house and money he cheated you he will give you something that will compel the gentiles to come to your light and even their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together now there is nothing in the bible that is a true blessing that is physical listen carefully there is nothing in the bible that is given physical like you give someone something physical you may call it a blessing but all blessings are spiritual all blessings the bible says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places and in christ We reign in this kingdom by the access to the light that we have. Unfortunately, please pay attention, especially for those outside. Unfortunately, men are so result conscious that they understand spiritual things too late. The system of the kingdom is such that until the tree is established before fruits come out. So if all you are looking for is just result, you may be, you may miss a major part of the dealings of God.
God is working something in your life and there's still a rent issue waiting. And then the devil will use manipulate because you see, let me tell you this. The domain of the senses is where Satan dwells. He is the master of the sense realm. He knows that the natural man is governed by the impulses, the sensory perceptions that come from his environment. So he will try to manipulate what is there or not there and use it to probe and discredit the integrity of what God is doing in your life. If it is true you are receiving favor, where is it? And you stand and say, boy, it's true. Oh, Kai, God, you serve. I just finished seven days dry fasting and it was by the mercy of God I met my roommate almost finishing his gari. Are we together now? And the devil cheats you because he's a master of the sense realm. But do you not know the Bible says while we look not at the things which are seen, the things which are seen, you don't look at them but you can look at the things that are unseen because the things that are seen are temporal say temporal poverty temporal low levels in the spirit temporal he said but the things that are unseen they are eternal so we must be spiritual and by spiritual it means that we use the word of god as our new plane our perception becomes a derivative of the integrity of God's word, not our experiences. Your experience at this level does not capture enough to prove that God is faithful. So if you depend on your experiences, you will see gaps in, supposed gaps in the faithfulness of God. You will see obvious things God did not do, supposedly. So you take your mind, your life is too small to just try to create a system of vetting God's integrity. You use the word of God and say, Lord, my life may not have A, B, and C yet, but I know from the integrity of your word that you do not fail. And not even my own experience is enough to discredit your integrity. You have cheated Satan when you get to that level. Because Satan will never be able to manipulate you until he uses something that is obvious in your life. Where is the money if you say God is faithful? Where is the anointing? You are a man of God and you claim God has raised you to be a prophet to the nations. In one year, nobody invited you for anything. Is it really true that the hand of God is at work in you? Where are the Gentiles that should come to your light? At first, you will claim you have faith. But the reality of the lack of demand on your grace will sit down and discourage you. And you say, am I called or what? If it's a demonic attack, let me know. And repent and just find somewhere. But I mean, am I called? And God says, just listen to me. But if you continue staying, my brothers and my sisters, one day it will do you like a dream. You will wake up one day into a dimension of the spirit that you will have to step back and join others to say, Lord, what is this? And then men will say, like they always say, he came out of nowhere. And God will say, keep quiet. Nobody comes out of nowhere. He says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. If, if you give yourself halfway, hoping so that if it fails, at least you can put your leg somewhere. It, it doesn't work like that. Let me tell you. You throw yourself in this thing and say, if I perish, I perish. This, this scientific Christianity, I know God is faithful, but let me patch him with an uncle. So one leg is here, one leg. So that whatever happens, your ego is not strong. And that very ego is why you may never see the power of God. Because you have not proven to God that you have thrown all to him. And you just come and say, God, if you don't help me, I don't have an option. God says, this is what I like. Now that you have stepped aside, let me show you that I am a great God. Are we blessed tonight? I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you. You know, most believers don't know why the church is mandated to meet frequently. Even pastors, most men of God don't know why they hold weekly fellowships. Others think we hold weekly fellowships so that at least there will be resources to run the ministry um, for, for the week or the month. Because every time people gather, 
they drum the fact that you shouldn't come before God empty handed so they think that the regular convergence of believers is just a system of generating revenue for the church it may not be entirely true the regular convergence of believers is a system designed in the intelligence of God is one of the ways that the church is built one of the ways that the church matures because every time we gather together among the many things that happen number one there is an opportunity for an encounter with the Spirit of God that's entirely spiritual are we together now and then number two an opportunity to learn the ways of God to learn the ways of God life will not excuse you for what you do not know life treats those who disobey and those who don't know in the same category I'm passionate about what I do not know I'm passionate about the danger I may submit myself to not knowing what I should know and so my heart is always panting to find out Lord thank you for what you have shown me but what else do I not know if you do not know look at me for instance if I'm standing at the edge of this stage and I do not even know that there is a depression here that can throw me down I'm just shifting innocently the depression will not think that just because I'm not aware it will not touch me I will fall and it can kill me is that true so when someone tells you hey hold on when you get here stand that knowledge has delivered you is that true so we come for a convergence like this because it is an opportunity for God to expose us to the ways of God and then it is an opportunity to experience the power of God in the midst of his people is 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 not going to be possible to present a God that you have not tasted of the possibilities that are contained in him it's one thing to know that the possibilities of God are encapsulated in this Bible but it's another thing for your life to at least have a taste of it you don't need to experience everything but that God does something in your life that you can now say Kai God now I know I know so the next time you are talking to someone and says which God you say no forget about the apostle look at my life I'm now a testimony an epistle that God is able to do this and that hallelujah there is a spirit that makes believers to not focus on the ministry of the word the spirit of distraction you can even come to church and you'll be surprised that just because you are sitting and looking you are learning no the bible says that the sower sows the word right there satan is in the midst of of, of god's people roaming around and looking for careless hearts and he comes by himself and takes the word so that you are ever learning oh this topic ah i know it i remember genesis chapter this verse this but there is no evidence that shows that this has become spirit and life in you. so please let's challenge ourselves and say lord it is true that i don't serve you just for results but lord i'm determined i'm determined to begin to see your hand in my life if you see god's hand in one two three areas and remaining four five six you are encouraged but where you get zero over six of god's hand is not enough testimony are we together it is the word of god that builds it is the word of god that gives men allocations in this kingdom like a domain and the word of god allocates you come darling and says you stand here come my dear stand here come this is your place of dominion you have believed in me enough the word of god gives you your allocation in life so this person starts somewhere and god says there is a seat i have given you in the prophetic 
and the word of God gives you that position. You stay there and you know it's an office backed up by God himself. No man will be able to stand against you. This one was apportioned by the spirit as a testimony, not of your desire for ministry. Listen, as a testimony of your staying power with God. For as a prince, you have power with God. You can roam around and say, God has called me into business. Life drives you out. You come again and say, God called me into family. And you roam around life and there is no space for you. He dug a well, they came and covered it. They say it's not your space. He dug another well, they covered it. When he dug the first one, they gave him space. And he called it Rehoboth. He said, God has given me my own space. You need to have your own place in life. Dominion is territorial. Until you find your jurisdiction of dominion, you cannot begin to walk in it. You will hate people. You will be angry. You will quarrel people. You will hate others that God is blessing in their area of dominion. It is the word of God that allocates. While the word of God is being taught, mystery after mystery, principle after principle, the spirit of God is using the word to give men spiritual jurisdictions of power and relevance. And so this lady hears that God is distributing this and then the call of God upon her life locates her in the place of the call. And this one hears that God is lifting people in the area of business and God keeps her there. And by the time these people have been around God for a long time, you look at them and you see the grace of their office established in that dimension. This roaming around of believers without knowing the jurisdiction of your spiritual relevance is dangerous because satan can also mimic god and carry you somewhere that the equipping the wiring the spiritual configuration within you should not it does not allow you to be there and so they carry you and you die because you want to prophesy are we together now because the word of god did not give you the balance and the proper allocation your ego allocated you to a dimension you don't have grace for every prophecy you lied every prophetic command never came to pass and you find out you are frustrated and you stand and say lord what am i doing with my life I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you egg, lava, pupa, adult and then when you are now mature to give you a space are you getting what I'm saying now? an allocation yes, you're a medical doctor but I give you a space that you will carry the healing anointing to the nations you may be a doctor professionally but your destiny demands that you are working in this. How you know you are making progress in the spirit is that somewhere along the lines of your experience, you begin to see these spiritual allocations. You can know. God, where are you taking me to? Just follow. It first starts as a general prayer. It first starts as just studying the word of God to know him. Let me tell you, there is nobody that God puts ministry consciousness in him before he calls him. That's wrong training. The, you start on a neutral ground. Lord, I love you. I need your presence. I need your glory. Not I need a church. Not I need a title. Not I need a PA. Not Lord, I've suffered in this family. Wouldn't I be rich? No, sir. God does not define the geography of men's assignments first. He allows them to begin to seek him on a neutral ground. And then on, on grounds of their faithfulness, when their hearts are locked to him, then the spiritual jurisdiction of their assignment, he starts to allocate it. And many times, depending on the jurisdiction, there are jurisdictions that will necessitate that you touch other dimensions before finally getting there. So God is calling you into an apostolic ministry, but you will start as an evangelist. For two years, you will be an evangelist. And then you will switch and be a teacher. And then you will be like a missionary. The final destination is here. By the time you build a camp there, I am evangelist Emeka. By the time that apostolic grace is coming, you will cause confusion. Because you are among evangelists, but they know that what you are doing is not evangelism. And you will start teaching based on your experience. And you will start saying the rest are wrong. 
Whereas it was your staying power in the training to allow you to get to the final destination. Please, place value on the word of God. Place value on the, not just the reading of the word. You have been reading it. Place value on its ability to give you something in life. Look, let me tell you this. If I am your physical father and I have a little estate and you are waiting for me to die so that they can they can share the um, what they call it get the death benefit and share the money listen to what I'm trying to say the physical land and the territory you have can be seized by the government as simple as that they just say we need it and we will think of what to do another government will say it was not me the past government has gone and never will come forever but when God gives you a spiritual inheritance no man, no tribe they may hate you but my brothers and my sisters when a key is given to you the key is given in a way and a manner that God will cause nations to pass through that door it's impossible to ignore you these are the truths I have found there is rest when you find this All this fear up and down. How will my future be? Will I be great? Will I eat? Will my children eat? Those questions were designed to be answered naturally when you follow the pace of God's training. There are many questions we ask now. There are questions because we are jumping classes. If you stay with God, there are some questions you will not need to ask. Believe me. The kind of questions you ask will tell you what kind of student you are. When you are a proper student, the responsibility of the Spirit of God. No, they are, they are, you won't even know when you enter certain dimensions that others are praying for because your heart is with Him and you are saying, Lord, guide me. Curriculum after curriculum. No rushing. No comparison. I stay with you. Five years, others have moved forward. They have jobs and they have this and you are moving around like a thief across the earth. And say, Lord, what am I? God say, you, you are my son. At least know that one for now. Even if you don't know what I called you to do, behold, what manner of love? What, what is greater than that one? Lord, help me. Who am I? I'm moving around like Cain. And God says, don't let the devil cheat you. Just walk with me. And in one year, God will look at you and establish you with a grace. And people will look at you and say, ah, ah, I used to know Pastor Femi. Unfortunately, you used to know him that he must died died in training and resurrected with another life the son of man in power and glory he passed through a doorway in the spirit called galatians 2 20. now he has come out with a new light a new grace are we learning something already god bless you bless you guys thank you we must have passion for the word of God. I will touch a bit on something that I thought I would have the allowance to preach this year. In fact, when the Lord put this in my heart, I said, oh Lord, but I've cried to you again and again to allow me to preach this. And um, I honestly thought we'd be able to have the series. Um, but maybe tonight I may just do a little introduction on it. Um, is very powerful very powerful God thank you thank you there are things when you find in this kingdom please listen to me there are things when you find in this kingdom God, hell, and men will know you found something. There are things when you find, only God will know you found it. There are things when you find, only men will know. But there are things when you find, God, men, hell will know by, by his grace you have been given something.
And this is what I'm guiding you to understand. Do you know what I'm doing to you? I'm reconstructing your understanding about God and the correct approach to life. Now, you may not see the value in what you are receiving now. But my brothers and my sisters, give God time and be patient with yourself. And watch the wonder that you become. So tonight, I will just do an introduction of it, true riches. Just an introduction. It's not part one. We have a series next. We'll, 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 we'll transfer it to next year. But, and, and don't think I'm talking about money at all. Settle down and listen and let God bless you. Because when we hear riches, the first thing we think about because of the way i don't know if it's the way our country is, is going all the way you know once people just hear riches a lot of people are very happy this is a very spiritual teaching in fact riches is really spiritual luke chapter 16 and verse 11 luke chapter 16 and verse 11 read with me believers one two read Ah, that's not you. Be delivered from. Let's read one more time. One to read. Uh huh. Hold on. It's a question. Who will commit to you? So this one is not an achievement. People commit it to you. Listen. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? Unfaithful mammon. The word unfaithful suggests instability. Is that true? Something that is not reliable. And it says that if you are not faithful with the, in your righteous mammon, who will commit to your trust? When I saw this scripture, it blessed and changed my life. Who will commit to your trust true riches? There's something in this kingdom called true riches. And the Bible says that the basis for access to it, among other things, is faithfulness. Listen very carefully. And then that this dimension of spiritual blessings that the Bible calls true riches is a commitment. Meaning that God observes and sees your faithfulness. Listen carefully. He can allow you to do whatever it is that you're doing. But whilst you're doing it, he's observing you. And that you get to a point where you pass that spiritual test. And like a report card, God calls you and says, I give you something called true riches. And he says that if you are unfaithful with unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you? That means aside from God, who else has that access? He's not just trying to tell you. The, he's saying who else? Who else can commit to you this mystery that we call true riches? Thank you. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll read from verse 2 to 8. Listen very carefully and you'll understand something powerful tonight. Paul is speaking now. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you word verse 3 how that by revelation listen he made known unto me what the mystery by revelation he made known I didn't search it out he brought it and gave it to me as I wrote afore in few words, we are reading to verse 8, verse 4. Whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. 6. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. 7. Wherefore, 
I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. Eight. <laughs> Listen, it says unto me, Paul now, Paul is looking at the excellency of what he has found and saying, Lord, do I deserve this? Listen, it says unto me who am less than the least of all the saints is this grace. So it's a grace. Is this grace given? What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles. Help me. The unsearchable riches. Not just the gospel. That I should preach the unsearchable unfathomable riches look at the description that is used there he didn't say that i should preach the gospel that i should preach they, they are mysteries the bible says there is a grace that this grace can operate in a man and grant him uncommon understanding to these mysteries that the bible calls the unsearchable riches of christ these are very deep spiritual things. Listen. And these are the spiritual blessings by which the dominion of the saints is established upon the earth. That the dominion of the saints is not just established because all things have, you know, you have dominion. No, no. Prophetically, the dominion of the church has been established. But in experience, we are yet to come into the fullness of that understanding. Paul was speaking to the church, the Hebrew church, and he told them, he says, he was quoting some, some eight, you know, that you have put all things under his feet and all of that. And he says, but we do not yet see all things. The unsearchable riches of Christ. What is it? If I ask you, define for me, because this is in the Bible. This is the Pauline epistle. What is the unsearchable riches of Christ? Money? Business, Naira and Kobo, no, sir. May God open your eyes. This is an introduction tonight, but may God open your eyes to see it. My brothers and my sisters, these are the commanders of dominion. These are the systems allocated for the dominion of the saints. The Bible calls it true riches. That man, there is a grace that God by observation, seeing your faithfulness, this one you can never find it. It's not just by fasting and praying. It's not just by reading a book. God comes to you as a reward for faithfulness and grants you a grace that opens you up to a mystery called the unsearchable riches of Christ. This is what the Bible calls true riches. What is it? That's why Paul, Paul was, remember Paul said, I thank my God, I pray in tongues more than ye all. So Paul would be lying if he told us he was spiritually lazy. That man was very diligent in the spirit. And when it came to this description, Paul was even broken. Seeing the level and the gravity of the spiritual investment made upon his life. He acknowledged that unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, was this grace given. That I should be the custodian to release this unsearchable mystery to the body. Until Paul came, no man had seen it. Not even the eye of those who walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw many spiritual things, but their eyes could not see this dimension. And that's why Paul said, I didn't see him in the flesh. I was, I was, I was a murderer out somewhere. When Jesus was, I was not even part of the seventy. And God just picked a young man on his way to Damascus. A donkey falls down. He knocks me and calls me and says, I want to give you. I want to allocate space for you in this dispensation that you are mandated to be the custodian, the dispenser. That's why he started by saying, look, when my teachings are hard, don't criticize me. There is a grace. I received it. God came to me by revelation and opened up to me this thing. And he calls the name, the caption of it is the unsearchable riches of I have cried and cried and told the Lord to take away useless knowledge from my life. 
that means profitless knowledge both for me and for the saints that God will grant me access to light and truths that are useful to help men and help my generation first to know him and then to be able to walk in the experience of his life it's been my prayer it still is my prayer and so when the Lord opened me up to this I was so blessed let me tell you sincerely and and God is my witness and I tell you this I'm a, I'm a student I'm not ashamed when I learn things from people and I build you know I'm not I'm not somebody who is, 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 is arrogant to say all this and that I am a product of many 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 spiritual minds but when it came to these dealings the way I look at you is the same way God was opening me up to the world see this this is the key the mystery that connects to this and many times when I listen to people fathers of faith and I hear them teach I say God this is what you were telling me I say because I'm the one who told them to not everything in your life will come by studies I'm not teaching you to be lazy but we're teaching we're teaching this is this is this is a school of the spirit not everything in your life will come by studies and lecture my brothers and my sisters there are different ways god imparts knowledge to us one of it is through the stillness of your spirit be still and know that i am god and one of it is access revelation spiritual illumination god just comes to you and grants you access there are things i know today i don't know how i got it the same way you receive a prophetic word i just know that this came to me what are these unsearchable riches right these are the spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth these spiritual blessings these unsearchable riches what you call true riches they are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and manifest the reality of god's life here and now The spiritual blessings that provide an advantage there has to be a system in our dealings with God where we stand at an edge where we sustain an advantage it is not it is not something hidden that life is harsh my brothers and my sisters listen to me it is no secret that ministry without a spiritual advantage is simply a human pursuit of frustration men are not that kind to allow you excel without the assistance of the spirit realm mm -mm. from tribal sentiments to the gates of hell and their manipulations etc etc everything looks like it's against you you only rise and reign in life to the degree to which you sustain a spiritual advantage are we together now yes um come come doctor if you ask us to push ourselves and he's standing here he's already in a vulnerable position and then you provide a system of support and i'm standing here and someone is holding me these things are my advantage is that true now even if he's stronger than me if he tries to push me on the strength of these factors you see that i will get a dimension of results that is unfair because that's not the true reflection of my capability i have trusted systems that have provided an advantage and the bible tells us that these unsearchable riches they were designed by god as a proof of his love and his determination to see that the saints reign so he put together these systems so that by them we can stand strong and shout at the gates of hell and know that there is a spiritual fortification 
it is ultimately god that gives us victory my brothers and my sisters but the victory is broken into systems so you can know that god has given you victory and not understand the systems he provided and you find out that your life consistently continues to be a disadvantage are we together now bless you thank you so true riches i define are spiritual blessings that provide an advantage for the believer to reign on the earth and to manifest the reality of god's life here and now we're just doing an introduction romans chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says that they which have received the abundance of grace everybody say the abundance of grace the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness it says they shall reign in life they shall reign in life they shall reign in life this is what validates the fact that we are kings revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 to 10 and they sung a new song saying Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed them should be. It's a mistake there. Because these are the four and twenty elders. Redemption was not for them. So they are speaking over the saints. So the word us there is a mistake in translation. Redeem them to God by thy blood. Out of every kindred. Listen now. Every tongue, every people, every nation. Verse 10 and has made us now them you understand and has made us unto our god what kings and priests and the bible says and we shall reign where on earth so god's dominion agenda is real he wants us to reign he wants us to manifest a dimension of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the Christ. Now, I hope you understand, let's, let's refresh ourselves with redemption realities, that Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Then he says that no man cometh to the Father except by me. Is that true? So Jesus is the door to the kingdom. He is the only, not even just many, he is the only valid access point into the life of the Spirit. You can manipulate through all the routes into a life of spiritism. But if you want to access the kingdom life, Jesus is the authorized channel, not even an angel. Are we together now? And then the Bible lets us know that the, the, the system that makes for salvation, Romans chapter 8, when you, 10, when you read from verse 8 to 10, you know, the Bible says that you confess with your heart the Lord Jesus, you believe. You will mouth the Lord Jesus. You believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then you are saved. The moment you get born again, watch this. What does it mean to be saved? As it were, to receive new life. Very simple. The Bible says that there is a translation. But much more than a translation, the Bible lets us know that this divine life, the life we call Zoe, known by men as eternal life, but it's more than eternal life. It is God's life, a quality, not the kind, the very life of God. Are we together now? The Bible says by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that that life is supplanted. We are refreshing ourselves now. Upon the human spirit so that he that becomes joined to Christ now becomes one spirit. It's a mystery known in ancient times as the salt covenant. Where two people wanting to enter an inseparable relationship bring salt. All of them bring samples of their salt and they mix it together. The condition for separation is that everyone must pick his salt. Are you seeing that now? Yes. Another example I've taught you is called the doctrine of interpenetration. This is the mystery of marriage. The mystery by which two people become one right so a separate entity called a man another separate entity called a woman by covenant they become one one not physically but one in the spirit recognized by god himself are we together now that's why the bible says let no man do asunder it put asunder is a warning because there are implications in the realm of the spirit 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? So man receives of that life, Zoe, the spirit of God. And then among the many things that, are, that happen to man is that your capacity to now begin to comprehend spiritual things is quickened. Still by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And then the operation of the word, the logos, and the operation of the spirit of God begin in your life. You begin to learn the ways of God. And then the word of God begins to wash you. Huh? Like you wash a cloth. Begins to purify your conscience. And then your mind is educated again. The light is driving out that darkness. And gradually, gradually by all those exercises, conformity and transformation. Not impartation yet. Conformity and transformation. These things will remain for a very long time in your life. And then you begin to see the grace speaking. Are we together now? Because grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. So it's a laborious assignment because not everything in your mind is of the devil. There are things that are correct. So God will not reset your mind. And then he will do that only with your permission. So it's possible to be transformed one degree in 10 years. That's how slow you wanted God to take you. Are we together now? So you find out that after 10 years, the level of results that should accrue to a life that was diligent with God is not showing in your life. God is limited by your yieldedness, limited by your alignment. This is what now begins to separate believers into different cadres. And then of course now you bring the issue of the election of grace. People who by his predeterminate counsel, he has called into certain offices and dimensions. Usually God will do an unusual work in them. Are we together now? A work many times that is more than their personal yieldedness. That's why they can't take credit for it. It was an acceleration that came because of the assignment they are to provide. So they enter dimensions of the prophetic way before they start understanding what prophecy is. The only thing they have to do is correct their errors, not pray for new visions. They have been seeing it since. It's just that they have been interpreting nonsense. So what they are repenting of is not, it's not, it's not a hazy vision. There are people who even, they got born again and there and then, they started seeing visions. There and then. Others came from priesthood. A wrong key forced the door. To, you, you understand what I mean? A wrong key of spiritism and tradition opened a wrong door i hope you know that if you meet a native doctor and he opens your eyes even when you get born again the eyes will not close again it's been opened hmm. the only thing is you will hand over the lordship of that sight to god are you getting what i'm saying now because there is a spirit that becomes the gateway of your access I, believers are you learning something yes to you it looks like you are just seeing visions no there is a spirit that grants you access to that gateway and there is an exchange that happens that you are not aware for being granted access to see things in the spirit and you are routing by a wrong door you will not know because it's subtle after 10 years you find out that your soul has truly been sold to the devil are we together now so when you get born again it's true that your eyes were open with the charm you will stop seeing the demons that oppressed you but the realm of the spirit is already open to you it's true systems of advantage that believers can access and god can grant them grace maybe let me just touch on two or three of them at least we'll still do them next year the unsearchable riches these are the things that when I look at in my life sometimes I just get down my knees and I say God thank you thank you you don't owe me anything you have been faithful I found them and they are very powerful can I give you the first one the first of these true riches this mystery is called the goodness of God. The goodness of God. What is this? You will know now 
that it is that grace that is released on you if this grace is not present you cannot have conscience it is the goodness of god that is responsible to plant the need for repentance in men not mercy mercy has its place the goodness everything i'm telling you i'll show you from the bible you will now see why god told moses it is my goodness i will allow you to see my goodness the goodness of God allows for conviction of wrongs and repentance. But the goodness of God also allows for continual repentance. The word repent is not for sinners. I've told you this. It's not a word that is just left for sinners. It's a kingdom expression. A system of consistent realignment to a greater dimension of God's glory. It's called repentance. Let's look at a very serious scripture. Romans chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 just write it down and let's read we're bible students romans 2 1 to 4 ready i will tell you where to join me in the reading therefore thou art inexcusable O man whosoever thou art that judgest listen now carefully he's talking about judgment for wherein thou judgest another thou condemnest thyself for thou that judgest does the same things too but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Three. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Now look at verse 4. Read with me, please. Or despised thou the what? Riches. Hold on. Stop. Let's not rush. Despised thou the remember we're talking of true riches we're fishing them out now that there is something called the riches of his goodness what does it do and forbearance and long suffering not knowing that the goodness of god leaded thee to repentance if you ever repent it is the goodness of god that came to you it's not something you did by your strength to say oh i think I... no the the fortitude to realize the need for alignment is proof that god has been good to you this is the bible it says it is one of the two riches given to the saints the riches of god's goodness hmm. are we still together tonight did you know that the riches of god or the goodness of God is one of the true riches of the kingdom. Many people just, ah, oh God. When the Bible says, surely goodness, we quote it every time, surely goodness and mercy, as if we are singing a special number. This is a very deep mystery. If the goodness of God does not go with you, I will tell you, I will show you people from the Bible, the state of a man who has not been granted access to these riches. You will see what happens when god looks at people jesus looks and says you are poor in spirit that they are bankrupt he knew what he was saying they had food in their houses but there were certain attributes of the the advantage of god given to the saints it's not there in their life let me show you first timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 this is a portrait of men who have not been granted access to the riches of God's goodness. Read with me. One, two, read. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh -huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Do you know what this means? That means you have lost the ability to recognize. This is what happens to a man who can carry a knife and tear a pregnant woman, bring out a child, and kill the person and by the next day he's moving and smiling let me tell you what that person needs is not revival what that person needs is not even mercy what that person needs is the goodness one of the two riches sent like an errand when the goodness of god meets that person he breaks down immediately true riches the unsearchable riches of christ so god looks at men and sends his goodness to them and all of a sudden you see men translating from level to level and they do not know what spiritual mystery is responsible for it keep that scripture again please romans 2 and verse 4 the riches of his goodness 
not just his goodness the riches the wealth you see that a man who had this was david david knew the goodness of god that's why he became a man after god's heart lucifer didn't have this if Luc no no demon has this lucifer was not given the privilege of accessing the goodness of god so repentance is in it it's not that he doesn't want to do it has he not been watching believers get born again in crusade grounds why didn't he say god i've watched this thing for a long time let's talk you are my creator no it is the goodness of god that allows men to ever see the need for repentance evangelists pray for this if you are going for crusades don't just pray for signs oh god let them know i was called <clears throat> pray intelligently lord let there be a supply of the riches of your goodness and you will watch the wonder this is what happens in redemption camp when papa Ia Debo preaches a simple message and says i will count one to five one and you see people run they don't even know what is bringing them out this is what the generals had charles g finney are we together now they had this in in very abundant measures they understood this wealth of the kingdom called the goodness of god when we say the goodness of god we just mean his ability to be benevolent it's more than that the primary assignment of the goodness of god is to create awareness of the need to realign so that we become better reflectors of his glory the bible calls it his goodness second hmm. peter chapter 3 and verse 9 is somebody learning something tonight he says who shall commit to you if god opens your eyes and you see it and engage it then your life will change the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to us what not willing that any man perish but that all should come to repentance this is god's willingness so he sees our family members and he already knows that the way they are going their lives can never reflect god and then his goodness some of you it was the goodness of god that brought you here to koinonia not invitation it was the goodness of god that gave you access to the teachings because god designed that you come to repentance first of salvation and then consistently realigning your life and then you see the beauty and the glory of god come out of your life say the unsearchable riches of christ hmm. let's try another So the goodness of God is an advantage in my life. An advantage. An advantage. What is the advantage? Causing me to consistently realign. So that I get to a point where my life becomes like the brightness of the sun. And people say, ah, ah what happened? And you say, God has been good to me. Now, the carnal man would think what you are saying is, God gave me favor. You understand what I'm saying? Or God made a helper. Or like our dear sister shared, God made somebody to give me miracle a lot. That's true. But what really happened was that he caused you to repent, to align, so that his glory can better find expression in your life. The riches of his goodness. The next time you see stubborn and rebellious people in your house, the key is not counseling. The key is intercession for a solid encounter with the goodness of god i i got to hear a very touching testimony of some of these are young people who are very stubborn and the family collected a loan trusting god to help them to start a life and the the young boy and his friend true story they went to carry the car of the the car of the the friend's father you know all these boys that carry cars just to explore their their whatever it is and 
this one would drive and park and give this one to drive and park they were changing and then when it was the turn you see how the devil you see when the goodness of him it was now the turn of the young boy who came from a poor family whose parents now collected loan thinking it will help them start life and the young boy it was his turn he was driving a car of his friend's father and there came a big truck it was a miracle that the boy survived and the family said i'm not hearing anything just get my car and bring for me that was how they had to look for I, these are people like counsel they had to add an extra look for money because it got to the police station and all of that you see that kind of thing and you will see the boy he will pass as if he gave his parents a word for taking first the goodness of god is not there that sense of remorse he has put the family in in trouble that it would take the prophetic to bring them out not business this one you can't come out just by business acumen it's going to take god to come and lift you out and yet you see the boys moving around and i was just looking at him and he was looking around no remorse look at armed robbers that kill people in the night and by the next morning they pass the same house they rob and you see them smiling during crisis the people that kill people do they die suddenly they are alive they pass a house that they know i'm the reason for the obituary in this house and then they pass and laugh they have not encountered the goodness of god let me tell you it's not good to see somebody who has not partaken of the grace of the goodness of god they are the people we call heartless conscienceless like some of the corrupt people that steal the money of nigerians this is what they need are we together now number two Proverbs chapter 5, chapter 4, from 5 to 9. The second of the unsearchable riches is wisdom. Don't assume you know what I'm teaching. Just listen. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5. 1, 2, read. Question, where? Get pure water. Where? Um, shop. Are we together? Get pounded yam and soup. Where? Restaurant. Get injection for malaria. Where? Hospital. Get wisdom. Where? It's not that I don't want to get it. Where is it? Where do they find it? It says, get wisdom. Then get understanding. They go together. All through scripture. You see this. Now, um, next year I'm going to be teaching you spiritual operations. And one of it will be how spirits work. It's, they are all dimensions of the Holy Spirit. But you will notice that there are classifications. There is an operation of the Holy Spirit that never works as a person. Do you understand? It, it must be in twin, walking that way. It was the mystery that Jesus used in sending the disciples. He sent them two by two. Never sent them one. Everywhere you see wisdom, from Genesis to Revelation, you will see understanding going with them. And then sometimes they can form a tag team, knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Three of them. A threefold cord. That whoever stands in the middle, it's only God that can take him out. When you stand in the middle of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, a fortification has been built that nothing designed by man can break that defense. Stronger than the wall of Jericho. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not. We're reading to verse 9. Listen carefully. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Uh -huh. Forsake her not. The Bible personifies wisdom. And she shall preserve thee. Love her. And she shall keep thee. Seven. Wisdom is the principal thing. It says, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting. See it now again. Get understanding. 
Now see the benefits. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. You know what honor is? Causing men to discern, acknowledge and celebrate your relevance. The Bible says wisdom is in the office of wisdom to bring honor to men. When thou dost embrace her, last verse, it says she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. You said you are a king, but where is your crown? Wisdom is the holder of the crown. It says she shall give a crown of glory. It is through wisdom we find glory. A king without a crown is not a king. In ancient times when they defeated cities, they not only removed the crown of the king, they removed his whole head and walked with it back to their city. A, a symbol. The moment the king was captured and his head taken, nobody fights again. The battle was over. And now the Bible says that the wisdom shall give you a crown of glory. I can say I am a king, but where is my crown? That there is a spiritual blessing that holds the crown of those who will reign in this life. And the Bible says it is called wisdom. Proverbs chapter 8 is going to be a long reading. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. I want us to pray tonight. These are the systems that will make your life worth living will make your life meaningful by every standard proverbs chapter 8 doth not wisdom cry look at how merciful god is to the extent that wisdom now goes around looking the bible says wisdom is crying crying because of the foolishness of men and what their lives are becoming as a result of lack of accessing her it says an understanding are you seeing them together Wisdom is crying, understanding is adding her voice. Next verse. Reading to the end. Two. She standeth in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. Three. Let's hurry up. She crieth at the gates, the place of exchange, where men enter and go out. Wisdom says, don't pass without me. Don't return without me. At the entry of the city, at the coming it at the doors for unto you O men i call wisdom is speaking and my voice is to the sons of man O ye simple simple there does not mean humble simple means unwise meaning there is there is no fortitude for comprehension it says understand wisdom and ye fools be of an understanding heart here for i will speak excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things seven for my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness is an abomination to my lips eight all the words of my mouth are in righteousness and there is nothing forward and perverse in them they are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge Receive my instruction and not silver. Hold on. If I give you wisdom and I give you silver, wisdom says, please don't be foolish to choose silver. Leave silver fast and come to me. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. Two things the Bible says are better than rubies. One wisdom, two a virtuous woman. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. Uh huh. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. I hope we have the grace to continue. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom i am understanding i have strength please read by the spirit this is what i want you to do. now wisdom is giving you a manifesto like a gentleman trying to ask a lady out and he's trying to convince her and give her reasons to say yes to him and he's saying by me kings reign if you see any king reigning on earth this is what enthroned him wisdom you see any king reigning in business in ministry is not just god wisdom 
By me kings reign and princes decree justice. 16. By me princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me and those who seek me early will find me. That means it's not cheap to find wisdom. He gives you a time to seek. Riches and honor. You see why he said you should not choose silver? Because riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold. And my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. Will soon be there. That I may cause those that love me to inherit. Talk to me. I cause those who love me to inherit. Substance there is not money. Substance there is results. Tangibility. I will fill their treasures. Go ahead. The Lord possessed me. So this is how creation happened. Through wisdom a house is built. Wisdom is saying the Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. Next verse. I was set up from everlasting from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Three more verses or two. Then I was by him. Ah. As one brought up with him. And I was daily his delight. Rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth. And my delights were with the sons of men. Last verse. Now therefore unto me, O ye children. Hearken to me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Wisdom. One of the unsearchable riches that people can possess wisdom and he's saying even God used me for his results. That means you are not going to be able to produce any kind and any dimension of result without wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom. Not the knowledge of it. Not the comprehension of it. The ability to correctly engage the mysteries of the kingdom is called wisdom. What is wisdom? The ability to use the word to produce supernatural results. That's wisdom. My brothers and my sisters, I can show you scriptures upon scripture. We are doing an introduction today supernatural wisdom that happened to men they rose on account of that wisdom let's look at one scripture first kings chapter 3 solomon god's portrait of wisdom you see that every once and again these men obtain one or more of these attributes and that's what they used to do business in the earth realm and they, they dumbfounded the wisdom of men. First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. We are reading to verse 13 from verse 9. Solomon is praying now. God is asking him, what should I do? And he says, give therefore thy servant an understanding heart. To judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Verse 10. 
and the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. To 13. And God said to him, because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself, what? Long life. Neither hast thou asked, here it is again, unfaithful mammon, riches for thyself. Nor hast thou asked the life of thy enemies, but thou hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Let's see what God gave him. I have given, given, given. I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall rise on any unto thee. I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings. You see that? Every time kings were there, wisdom, understanding. Go to chapter 4 from verse 29. Go to chapter 4 and verse 29. Chapter 4, 1 Kings and verse 29. Read with me please. One, two, read. And God gave, go ahead, Solomon, wisdom, uh -huh, and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sun that is on the seashore, the manifesto, the attributes of all this spiritual blessing. Next verse. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country and all the wisdom of Egypt. Uh -huh. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezraite, than Heman, than Kalkol, than Dada, all these guys are champions of wisdom. They were noted for walking in strange dimensions of wisdom. And his fame was in all nations round about. 32. For he spake 3,000 proverbs and his songs were 1,005. Worship team. You see how songs come? An encounter with the spirit of wisdom. Believe me, one song that will cause the nations to bless you have you not seen that music artists write songs out of 50 they are like two three you know this is not human you know it by the way it lasts anything that is human has the characteristic of fading the moment time has no power over it it came from the realm of the spirit there are songs that were written when we were born and we are still singing it. There were songs that were written last month. We are tired of it. It tells you the dimension. It's not that there, there's something wrong with the song. The dimension from which the song came, if it is that which is of the earth is earthy. That which is of heaven is heavenly. 33. And he spake of trees from the cedar tree that is in lebanon even unto the high soap that springeth out of the wall he spake a lot he spake also of beasts and of fowls and of creeping things and fish i think there's one more verse and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of solomon from all kings of the earth does this look like gentiles shall come to thy light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising meaning there is what a man can possess my brothers and my sisters you may be in a shrine or you may be in a in a room that is made of mud blocks but kings will come when you possess what kings cannot buy they will come to you the last thing i'm going to do is to show you where wisdom stays because wisdom has a location job chapter 28 from verse 12 true riches when god wants to help a man he exposes you to the unsearchable riches of christ when you possess them you will look weak and frail my brothers and my sisters but when you begin to engage these systems of the kingdom your life becomes a wonder you see do you know why i'm taking our time to teach you these things <clears throat> so that you are not afraid of your results when you don't know the basis of the results that God gives you, even that result will make you afraid because you are not sure of the system of defense around it. Are we together now? 
But where shall wisdom be found? Remember I asked us a question. He said get wisdom and I said where? So Job now, the man of wisdom, wisest, richest, Job is having a conversation. Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Have you seen that they always go together? Next verse. Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Ah, where is the land of the living? That means it's not found here. It's not a commodity that is affordable in any market. Let no man deceive you that he knows where wisdom is found in this earth. Mm -mm. It cannot be found. The earth does not have the capacity to produce this. It can produce Sophia, human wisdom, that is a derivative of trial and error and science, but not the wisdom that comes from above. The depth said, it is not in me. The sea said, it is not with me. That means all these things, go back, all these things are storage devices on earth. They hide things. The depth, there are things that the depth keeps. And those who know it can say, bring it out. That's why the prophet can stand and look at the ground and say, O oh, earth. He said, let the people praise thee. This earth is not barren. Let the people praise thee. This earth will start yielding. Meaning that fruitfulness was hidden in the earth. No wonder seed time and harvest was tied in the similitude of the principle of the earth. The earth hides fruitfulness. Water hides abundance. You read your Bible, everything, the birds of the air and everything came out of water. And so they said, the depth said it is not with me. The sea said it is not with me. Next verse. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. Uh-huh. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, nor with the precious onyx, nor the sapphire. Next verse. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20 whence then cometh wisdom and where is the place of understanding he listed all the choice places in the earth where we can find treasurable things and he says that wisdom is not there seeing that it is hid from the eyes of all the living and kept close from the fowls of the air destruction and death say we have heard of his fame hmm. look at this destruction and death also give testimonies that they say we have even us we are still surprised as we destroy people and kill people we have noticed that whoever possesses this mystery escapes us freely he said we have heard of the fame thereof with our ears that means destruction is a spirit not an event it's a spirit it can come upon a family and leave out its characteristics Good understanding. God understanded the way thereof. That's the secret. Only God understands the way. And he knoweth the place thereof. Hmm. No, just, just stop at 23. God understanded the way. That means if you ever see any man with that dimension of wisdom, who gave him? That's why I told you it is, it is a grace. This is not something you walk. Education cannot give it. No. When men possess this dimension of wisdom, God gave it to men. It's one of the unsearchable riches of Christ. Solomon possessed it. And he did wonders. Ordinary men have been granted access to this mystery. And you can see a very young, frail person but carrying something ancient that was with God at creation and wisdom is justified by her children the results show you that this is not human my prayer is that somebody will will catch a dimension of this grace the wisdom of God that you will arise with it my brothers and my sisters 
and you will see Sheba and her bounties come to you that the things that you seek will come to you of their own accord believe me satan has deceived us to chase after things god never designed that we chase after things these are the commanders of dominion when you possess them it is impossible there is a testimony even from the realm of the spirit you don't have to plan to be great you just possess this and watch what they do to you the bible says she shall bring thee in other words i can find wisdom from a small room and wisdom says follow me like peter following an angel i step into the place of great men and i say what am i doing here and wisdom says this is where i live whoever possesses me will live with me and you will eat the bread of kings because wisdom brought you there but how many people desire the wisdom of God? So many people will tell you this is an interruption. There are many men of God that will not focus. Listen, many young Nigerians will not focus to listen to the wisdom of God. Just go all these pastors. You are just lucky. You are anointed. You are anointed. That's all. Let me hustle my life. No, sir. No, sir. Except the Lord builds a house. They labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. The Bible declares that the watchmen watch it but in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he giveth his beloved sleep. When God gives you wisdom, your eyes will see things. And it will surprise you what God will make out of your life. No man's anger can change what the wisdom of God does in your life. Let me tell you this. Learn this early in life. Whether people believe in you or not, it has no effect whatsoever on the forces of the spirit working in your life. If you ever look at a man holding this unsearchable riches of Christ, your anger is just beginning. You will be angry till you die. It will not do anything because death is the last enemy to be destroyed so if death testifies that i've hands up then you two hands up quickly that is one of the forces that was upon a pale horse in revelation one of the four horse riders and it gives up and says no this one is above my power and above my dimension wisdom knowledge Maybe let me give us one last one. The unsearchable riches of Christ. True riches. Are you ready? <laughs> the hearing ear listen access to the voice of God is one of the mysterious riches of the kingdom the Bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith. The spirit saith. The Bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, are we together now? Some shall depart from the faith, he says, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of demons. In the, the spirit speaketh expressly. That means one of the greatest you are at a point of advantage the hearing ear has nothing to do with the prophetic office it is a grace that god washes your ear with high iso so that you have the hearing ear is it not in your bible that thou shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way why because there is a way that seemeth right if all ways were fair and right, there would be no need for direction. The hearing ear is a desperate prayer 
that everyone must cry unto God and say, Lord, as I'm starting ministry, give me the ear that hears. Let me tell you this. Listen. I have studied the church in Nigeria for many years. I have studied the church in Africa. I have studied men and women of God and respectfully so. I am amazed at the way people move this way when the Holy Ghost moved that way and their ministries ended overnight. Not sin, not disobedience, but that the Spirit of God is going because the anointing goes where the Spirit is going. Wherever the voice of God is, that's where His power is. So if God's voice and power is going left and you are going right, even if it's sincerely so, that's the end of it. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, your spiritual investment of 20 years can crash in one day if you are not given the gift of a hearing ear. You will appreciate this in years to come. The higher you rise in ministry, the more desperate you must cry. Moses said, don't send us from here. Moses was not a fool. With a rod in his hand, thy rod and thy staff, he said, no way. If you will know, I need to know you are there. Just because God said, move left yesterday, does not mean he will say, move left today. You must hear him part time. And there is a grace. I have studied this subject of hearing God properly. I can tell you, hearing God even prophets have problem with hearing God let me tell you something about hearing God the gift of prophecy the hearing that comes to prophesy is not the same hearing that comes to give you direction you can walk in accuracy I can look at your name call your number call everything and you will be surprised how stranded you will be to hear the voice of God most people don't know because many people are, are prophesying nonsense and lies the hearing ear I, I have a lot of friends and, and, and by God's grace I've met very powerful and accurate prophets and you will be amazed at how stranded they are waiting for God to speak on matters in their lives and yet the accuracy that comes from them makes you believe that oh they are just lying down no where was the hearing of the son of the prophet who died and his wife was about to be taken the children were about to be taken the man was a prophet read your bible and see how many prophets were stranded be careful let me tell you this one day i will teach you how human beings spiritually are like machines i will teach you how god works with men so that just because a man is prophesying and dispensing mysteries let me tell you sincerely okay let, let's put it this way let's use midwives right have you noticed that you can see a midwife who has been giving birth helping people give birth for years and then when she is now pregnant you can be so surprised at the difficulty that she goes through and you are wondering madam with this experience right after her giving birth that almost took her life she will display that mastery again in the hospital prophets cry it's amazing how confused prophets can be I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower. Listen, and I will hear what he will say unto me. Read your Bible and see people who missed very vital seasons in their lives. Although their gifts and their graces were still there. When I learned this, I learned this mystery from Dr. D.K. Olukoya. I was listening to him some years ago and he said something he said that one of the greatest prayer you can pray is for a hearing ear and i said what is the meaning of that and you see if god helps you and you walk in a dimension of these graces you must be careful because most times we see the flamboyancy on the gift and you can join men even to deceive yourself that just because that gift that prophetic operation is at work it necessarily means you yourself are accurate it's not true 
have you not seen people dying of infirmity and healing others what is the mystery behind it if, if you understand what i'm this thing is a very deep teaching that's why the bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling one of the unsearchable riches of christ is a grace that can be given to men that you hear the sounds of the spirit you stand and watch and say i've heard him god is saying go left and everybody's saying go right use common sense you know you had god when you move left after five years people look at you i have seen a bit of what hearing god can do this ministry today my brothers and my sisters is proof that when men get these unsearchable riches you won't go down i'm not one person who comes all the time and say god said god said i'm very careful now we have especially we young people we have abused god said anybody just comes and says god said just because you felt like god said no or just because you were under the anointing and your mouth was talking there are tongues of men there are tongues of angels there is the voice of god are you getting what i'm saying now this is very powerful you must learn it there are times when i hear god speak everyone around me knows god has said the voice of god comes with the spirit of faith if it is god that you hear the voice of god will always come with the spirit of faith hmm. and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me it's impossible to hear god and remain and sit down there no here and there you can think you had god and he said go to kano you can say i know i had kano but tomorrow you just turn but you know god is very faithful he will allow you he knows we are students in the school of the spirit just keep playing around but the day his majestic voice lands on your life there is no power that can stop you let me tell you god is not always speaking god speaks but he's not always speaking a lot of people keep say god is always speaking no sir are you always talking at least you were created in his image no in the fifth day of the sixth month the word of the lord came the word of the lord came the word of the lord came i've had occasions where god has spoken to me and you have seen it even some of the messages there are messages here that god gave me the titles and i was i've been surprised at how they seem to have carried an unusual grace because god said it i stand here many times and i tell you this is what god is saying and then you begin to see the strange things that he is doing let's be careful with this god said let's not reduce god to become a man now it doesn't mean that you can hear things there is the knowing of the spirit there is the witness of the spirit they all look like voices you have to be very deep in the spirit to separate between impulses and speakings they are very different just because you had a spiritual communication does not mean god spoke remember that in the realm of the spirit the voice is not the only way to speak light is a way of communicating love is a language it can speak so i can hear that's the reason why regardless of how sure you think you are stay for verification when god spoke about koinonia to start three days we had set up the departments god has granted us grace i remember if you remember that time i was telling you god told me this and that and that people will come from nations and people this is what god said i remember saying it that time as at the time i said it i said i saw cgc this is not what i saw i saw it broken expanded what is this that i'm seeing i saw people standing parking filling the roads and you know like as usual every time you said god said you need grace yourself to believe it because there are times that you just sit and say okay now i'm calm it's like you you smoked uh, 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 what they call this thing and so you went high and to you you can even say look at the nonsense that i said and you listen to your own message and say, hey, 
it's not exactly God and God said what are you saying I'm the one speaking we were preparing to start packaging our messages I was thanking God and trusting and blessing him for the anointing he had given me and just saying oh God thank you because you are going to use our media ministry as a very major stream of income to bless the ministry and lift us and here comes the voice of God no in this season you are not going to sell your messages Facebook that time it was I mean it was even the first head of media's Facebook page and he said just carry your messages and put them on mp3 put them on Facebook don't put the videos just the audios and I will give it wings and it will go to the nations of the earth that's it my brothers and my sisters when God says sit back and watch the power that created the universe push things in your life there are things God has said listen to me there are things God has said when God talks notice that God doesn't care what you are seeing he tells you what you will do and he will do it so I stand upon my watch I'm not in a hurry to move God what are you saying in this season that's the reason why we have workers retreats that's why we have our own retreats a few weeks now I'm going to start my end of year retreat I'm telling you you don't know how excited I am at that time because many of you have gone no disturbances I just shut my phone and sometimes you need to get out of the busyness of life to hear God because there is as it were many voices many sounds and none of them is without significance the voice of house rent can interrupt what God is saying this spiritual haziness has a science the encumbrances of life can push you your child's school fees your life and God is saying fast for three days I say is it God is it a demon is it yes there are times that you check against the word of God but let me tell you there are times only God will help you because even you you don't know whether this is God again most people are not spiritual enough to get to this realm that's why they don't understand yes ago I've shared with you the story I had limited transport fare from Kaduna back to Zaria and I took initiative and I went and ate yam and beans also with the money I mean why sit here till we die remember the four lepers at least I should do one I already know that it's only God that will know how to take me back home and I believed with all my heart that I was acting by faith and I did and I stood in front of the junction near Waek office in Kaduna and a car just stopped and the Holy Spirit told me enter public transport oh. I told you the voice of God comes with the spirit of faith it's until the act has been done when you turn back on hindsight you say it has to be God who led me like this when you are passing through it you don't see the gravity of the faith you are exerting is when you look back and say eh. I entered that car I was just in rest rest you are supposed to be afraid you know how some of these our brothers are around and all of that until we pass Jaji I knew there was no hope you know if it's 10 naira you don't have or 20 naira you can beg but I mean when you don't even have up to 20 or 30 percent of what is the transport fare and then they now said everybody bring your money and people were bringing them but my God is my witness my heart was at peace this is what happens when it's God that is speaking you leave him to be responsible for the word I just obeyed and that was how someone brought out paid my transport fare I dropped at flyover here entered the bus happy because I felt at least whatever it is this one I'll pay and someone knew me in the car and paid I stopped in front of Northgate with the same money I was with there it was a message God was saying look I am God by myself I can do it anyhow there are times I can send a helper to give you money there are times I say the helper is in the car enter and meet him there it doesn't matter where the helper is believe God enough to go 
there are times he parts the waters there are times he says walk on it let it just be that he sees him are you hearing what i'm saying now you will need this for ministry when god sent us to go for our crusade we got up and moved like madmen what you see today my brothers and my sisters is a product of the voice of god you need the grace to hear god not grace for prophecy lord let me hear you. You, you, you you look you can pray and say god search my frail person what is the most accurate spiritual mechanism of communicating your voice to me help me in that area there are some of you that your hearing you have not trained your hearing if you if god speaks through your ears you will not hear and so you are going to say lord give me a kind of dream that i will wake up and find myself standing i will know that this one was not a dream let me tell you if your heart is right god will give you there are dreams that no devil can tell you in your mind mind how many of you have had what we call prophetic dreams you know this one is not my mind this is the voice of god unsearchable riches the hearing ear the seeing eye one time the storm was boisterous i think it was peter or paul and it was very obvious they were going to capsize and all of a sudden the hearing ear and the seeing eye an angel appears to him and speaks to him and says don't worry there shall be no loss and he calmed the people down and said hey relax an angel has appeared to me and he has said to me that there shall be no loss and the bible says that the storm calmed down and they went safely and arrived an island called melita when you hear god you can sit in the midst of fire and be singing and people are saying excuse me sir this is fire you say no i'm sitting on the voice of god roasting someone by your left roasting another person by your right and acting as if the fire is not seeing you sooner or later you will need this message sooner or later you will carry destinies come darling you will carry destinies that are behind you and you will need to hear god on behalf of them one day you will have children one day you will have grandchildren and that day this spiritual blessing will be tested one day you will be a man of god with a crowd of people now all of you are waiting for the prophetic word next year whether i tell lies or not you will believe it's left for me and god and if i lie you will punish me are you seeing how risky it is many of you say we are praying for you but you know you are not even serious about what you are saying because you are saying apostle the god that called you how you have been hearing him before let him help you just make sure you hear well for us you hear wrongly as a man of god for members and see the way their lives they will obey you against god just because you are fasting for a long time does not mean that your ears will hear it's a grace like earphone god will just put that spiritual earphone and start dictating this is how 2019 will be do this do that do this do that and you say god but like like Eliab, this is good and god says that's exactly the strategy satan wants to use next year use this route and you come out and you say people we are ready to go and they look at you and say ah just like that and god says don't mind them that's always how that's how the nation of israel was that's why moses was angry because he would suffer and hear god and come and talk to them and they would doubt husband please learn to hear god for your wife and your children otherwise one day god will be saying move left and you come with your degree and masters and phd nothing wrong you move left until life changes you in one position change your wife change the destiny of your children many of us sitting down here if our parents had god you shouldn't be at this level is that true there are a number of us we are going to pray many of us we are victims of the lack of hearing many of our parents were called into ministry they ran away not hearing 
and the blessing that would have come to us if they obeyed god it would have been easy you would have been born again since four years but their disobedience now you got born again at 31 look how hard it is for you to learn the things of the kingdom the hearing ear is a grace man of god please whatever you will do with god i don't care what is not going on in your life if you can hear god hear god on who to marry hello hear god on who to marry you if god plant four children and you give birth to seven you will take care of four he supplies he supplies follow his voice i know you think i'm laughing this is how our lack of spirituality has cheated people in the world before kings went for war they would inquire of the lord is it in your bible shall we go and god will say go and give them the strategy we have lost this in our generation so we just step out and and life just beats us into nonsense what of relocating a place where you want to be domiciled in where your family will be raised in you don't hear god i've told you that when the devil wants to destroy some people he will give them visa visa to germany visa to europe just because the interview was easy doesn't mean it's god there are times that satan can give favor to kill you there used to be a guy who used to drive me years ago like maybe four five years ago he was desperate to go to germany i said what is it for i got to find out that he did one funny arrangy thing where you do some kind of marriage with somebody there on contract then you come prepare papers and then fight divorce and then from there you have your papers and i don't know where that guy is now but he's a classic representation of grace to grass there are pastors that started well they kept navigating ministry well mighty men and women with anointing and then something happened in their life they didn't hear correctly or they didn't hear or they went based on the pride that results can bring no matter who you are if you trivialize the voice of god your head must touch the ground i'm telling you this it doesn't matter what level you get to in life and ministry please hear god as if you are just starting don't say because god has given me this my name is joshua selman god has given me results in ministry if you hear me talk to you like this i know what i'm saying lord should i pursue lord is this your will for me is this your will for me oh there's one conference that i have many great men and women of god some my friends around within this nation around and sometimes they have innocently felt apostle let's put forth a program let's put forth this and that and that people have come to tell me apostle what are you waiting for it's in the blueprint of the ministry to start sunday services what are you waiting for i remember one prophet of god very powerful prophet of god met me and said what are you waiting for start church and i just looked and said god bless you but this year I can't claim I hear everything, but my goodness, there are things this ear can hear. We are going to pray, and when it's time to pray, you are going to cry. If it means you laying hands on your ears to say, Lord, I am reaping the fruit of my not hearing you. It's very clear that my life is the way it is now. Because I'm not hearing you. Are we together? You need to hear God when you begin to hear multiple voices calm down none of them is god let me give you a big secret i don't care what you are trying to hear the moment you are hearing multiple voices shut down none of them is god the majesty and the jealousy of god will not allow you to hear many things his voice is mighty upon the waters when you start hearing many voices rose magdalene mary janet shut down my friend you are not hearing god just shut down lord what is the devil trying to do you are going to abuja today next tomorrow you are praying and it's like you saw the map of kano and then it's like you now saw london <clears throat> shut down lord what are you saying please hear what i'm i'm teaching you this based on the word and based on experience most people who get into trouble ignore the voice of god consciously somewhere along the journey 
this is true for marriage this is true for jobs this is true for geographic locations there are men of god that just stand up and go somewhere and just say well after all i'm, I'm a believer in christ i love the lord we are going to plant this church here and they find out they are struggling for a very long time it was bishop oyedeko that was saying how that there was a time that they started the church in ghana living faith was blossoming doing very well and they started the church in ghana and there was so much struggle after like four was it five years or six years or so the increase was not there and he was struggling everything he said he went there by himself to preach and still nothing worked and he went back and said god what is the problem and god said i am not there and he said shut it down immediately there are some of you from this message tonight you need to go and shut down a lot of things in your life because if you check it you will find out there's nothing wrong if you thought it was god you are a student in the school of the spirit oh i thought this business was god but now i'm hearing this is not god oh. i thought that it was god that said i should start the ministry i remember years ago when my well friends and all of that you know not really close friends who meet me and say apostle with the kind of grace you have start a tv ministry start this i told you about pfn when we had our first crusade pfn was willing to give me pastors and give me an auditorium to say start start a church we need you be careful not every good thing is god things don't have to be bad for you to leave them sometimes they can be good they are just not god There was a time I was preparing, taking my bath years ago. I had a meeting. I don't know if it was in Kaduna or one of these places. I had prayed, fasted, prepared a powerful message. As, as I was taking my bath, all of a sudden, my peace, I will come to that, will discuss peace. Peace as one of the mysteries in the kingdom to bail men out. The stubbornness of men will not allow them understand how the peace of god works he said he will speak peace peace is a voice peace can warn you and say you are landing in hot water peace can tell you man of god this association you are joining is what will destroy you it doesn't mean they are fake it doesn't mean they are not of god but this association is what will bring down your grace man of god be careful That's why I told you that these are the systems by which the saints dominate. So you can see that you can have a dream and in your dream you saw a Mecca dying. But in the physical it will never happen because there is a mystery that shields him. The dream you saw was the intention of Satan. But there is a fortification of a mystery. You can have a dream and see Joshua Selman dying in a motor accident. And start praying and say, hey, so this is how our apostle will die. <laughs> I, I guarantee you to remain as a dream. You don't know what is covering this man that is standing. It's not pride. Do you know how many times death has tested me? Oh. Make him ma, make him ma, make him ma. Make him ma. Not faithful with unrighteous mammon who shall commit to your trust the true riches of the kingdom these are the mysteries we do ministry with these are the mysteries by which kings rise and you look at a man and you see the wonder that his life emits and you are saying my god how is this thing working my brothers and my sisters these are the systems paul said me who i am the least of all the apostles was this grace given that i become a communicator of the unsearchable riches i have learned these things and they have helped me they have delivered me from evil that prayer 
lead us not into temptation but deliver us one hearing from god can deliver you and deliver your children's children our parents went head on some of them were the colleagues of some of the men of god in nigeria today and had they continued hearing god well they would have given us a good footing but the inability to hear i have seen pastors men of god that i knew years ago men of fire and seeing them and their shadows of themselves how can a man's yesterday be better than his tomorrow because of one of these spiritual blessings no wisdom some of us have lost destiny helpers that can change our lives because of the wisdom to be given to navigate friendship are you ready to pray tonight these are the keys by which we read my brothers and my sisters look at me forget about cars truly believe me forget about houses forget about all this fake life up and down when you possess these things you will tame life it will be at your command you will watch yourself with shock and wonder there are about eight of these true riches we'll preach it in a series next i just felt in my spirit to introduce it tonight the spiritual blessings that constitute an advantage in a believer i like you in the next our time is gone but in the next five minutes find a corner find somewhere and cry to god i'll just allow you instrumentally just set the atmosphere for us everyone pray everyone pray one of all of this that i listed the grace to hear you listen i like you to cry with all your heart lord grant me the grace i'm tired of thinking it is you when it is not you
time is gone but please listen we have just one more service for the year lord activates the speakings of angels the angel came and told daniel he said i am come to give you understanding there are angels that are sent i like you by faith to activate their ministry the angels the ministry spirits bringing accuracy bringing direction cleanses your ears and helps you listen listen the voice of god will take away wastage from your life wastage there are many men of god whose ministries finances have gone down because they didn't hear god they organized conferences god was not in it yes souls were saved yes lives were transformed there are many people who should not even have churches but they thought they had this is not to scare you but i'm being sincere with you happy is the man whose ears can hear the voice of god because you see we live in an arrogant society where people and their pride will mislead you away from god this our world is very proud you see people who don't know where they are going but they make you feel stupid for staying where god said you should stay and if you are not careful they will rob you of the courage to stand until you fall with them if i followed what people said if i followed what people wanted to do in my life if i followed what people wanted me to do i would have crashed in life and crashed in ministry some of us after koinonia listen i this we have one more service maximize it are we together some of us after this service you, you should go and find somewhere even if it's for one hour in the night to say lord this issue of hearing you you have to tidy this in my life everything you claim god told you by now we know he's not the one that said it don't feel ashamed but you must go back and say what is this families have died they have lost loved ones simply because people could not hear the 
spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days the spirit speaketh expressly expressly god who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets had in this last day spoken to us through his son the word that he has appointed heir over all things god is still speaking speaking to men and women and by speaking is not just you need to know you need to pray that god purifies your dreams some of us our dreams have been hijacked by forces let me tell you many things god wanted to tell you in dreams but there are powers that have hijacked the dreams to the point that now you don't even trust it yet dreams and visions it says i have multiplied visions i have spoken in similitudes even by the prophets these are all spiritual channels of prophetic communication let's use one more minute to speak that the blood of god the blood of jesus speaks over your dreams over your discernment and say lord i crush the voice of wickedness let there be a purification of the dreams of the vision a purification i cause manipulations of dreams and visions by the gates of hell confusing men confusing women confusing men of god confusing destinies we crush it in the name of jesus major camps christian camps in this nation that belong to the fathers of faith i've had the privilege to be there to walk around the length and breadth and being in those places i said kai it is good to hear god it's good to hear god i've seen the areas in my life where i had god and I've seen the excellency and the blessings of the results in my own life and in effect the life of others. Are we together now? We have a series. This is just an introduction. But please let me challenge you. When you go back, especially this issue of hearing God. Do you know why many people are small in our generation? I will tell you why because we follow instincts instincts brain work oh this is a b c this is e f g god does not take away your intelligence but you see a spiritual man the bible says that you do not know the wind bloweth where it listeth you cannot tell where it is going or where it is coming he says so is one who is led by the spirit You need an experience of a hearing ear and a seeing eye. There are encounters I have had and God has spoken to me through them. I will die believing it. If I get to heaven and I find out I'm wrong, I will apologize with all humility. But for now, they have become my convictions. They drive my life. There is no gate of hell that sustains the power to derail that focus because of the power of what was heard and seen if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will leave ministry if you do not hear the voice of god one day you will look at your wife and say are you sure you were supposed to be the one i'll marry or you look at your children 
you will look at your loved ones one day you will just commit suicide out of frustration but i know whom i believed and i am persuaded some of you have never made this decision to make jesus lord of your life you've made a decision to go to church you've made a decision to join a religion called christianity but you have not made a true decision to surrender everything and there are people there's another category i'll call all by uh, at, at once so that we'll save time there are those who at one point you truly made a genuine decision but the cares of this life the challenges in your life just overwhelmed you and right now you know that as it is right now as it is right now you cannot say things are all right between you and god you've backslidden you've you've turned away but the bible says if my people who are called by my name it says shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then it says then we lie here from heaven and will forgive their sin and then will heal their land forgiveness will always follow healing are we together i'm going to make an altar call right now any of the overflows outside inside here very fast i'll count one to ten listen there are people the holy ghost is speaking to and you know that you need to make your ways right with jesus you're saying lord things are happening in my family i do not even know the name of what is going in my family the first key is to surrender your all to sacrifice everything before his throne and say lord i'm not just coming to receive healing i'm coming to start a new life it's called zoe god's very life not another kind the very life of god hallelujah praise the lord before i make the altar call i want us to all close our eyes and pray in one minute intercede for those who are about to come and say lord no power will stop them from coming no power will stop them from coming we believe in the salvation of souls this is not a cinema where we are watching football this is a place where god is changing lives and destinies pray as you are praying for many of you the lord is going to be speaking to you right now there are so many outside in all the overflows it's like you've been waiting for a man to call you and say return home he's calling you he's calling you hallelujah now i'm going to count one to ten wherever you are please i'd like us to begin to celebrate them outside inside don't wait for others you are returning to christ and you are making this decision for the first time leave your seat and make your way quickly one we we'll count one to ten don't wait for anybody god bless you they are coming two please clear the way for them outside don't let no friends stop you jesus is calling you No, no, no. You are, doing, you are doing a very noble thing. Don't let any friend. Please encourage them outside. If you came with anyone, don't stop them from coming out. God will punish you if you stop anybody from coming out because he's your friend. It's, it's, it's an entirely, um, it's a personal affair. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, a sacrifice of your applause to motivate them and encourage them. Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Keep coming, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. Hallelujah. The Lord is still speaking to me that there are people you need to make your ways right with God. In fact, the Lord is showing me at least three ladies. 
you've not prayed like for the last two months because you are asking what i have done will the lord really really open up himself to me and the lord is saying you should make your way to the front clear the way for them please clear the way i don't care whether you are a pastor you are a prophet make your way to the front this is serious business I believe there are still people outside in the overflows, the first, the second overflow and across the road. Please make your way to the front. We are going to wait for you. One more minute, we are going to wait for you. We are going to wait for you. Please don't play games with God tonight. This is your destiny. He wants to bless you. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, thoughts of peace, thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. I believe in you. I believe in you. Let's all sing this song one more time and then we'll pray for them. Jesus, Son of God, I believe Hallelujah. I sincerely want to appreciate us, young and old. We're all here to receive Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. If I, if I give you a new phone, you don't accept it as though you are embarrassed. You accept it with gratitude. Salvation is greater than any other thing you will be receiving tonight. Are we together? And so I want you to be very proud of what you are doing whether you have been restored or you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time just make sure you are not reciting a poem make sure this is from the depth of your heart are we together lift your right hand high to the heavens and say this after me i'm just guiding you but the most important thing is the sincerity of your heart say after me lord jesus i believe in you i believe that jesus is the son of God I believe that he died for me I believe that he rose again for my justification tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord I hand over my life and my destiny to your care and I ask that you be my Lord, my God, my King forever. From today, the hold of sin, the hold of the flesh over my life comes to an end. This is a new beginning in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, you see these hands lifted. They have made genuine sincere commitments i pray that the spirit of god that is our seal of redemption will be a witness to this spiritual transaction and i pray in the name of jesus that from tonight let there be a new beginning in the name of jesus christ let there be a new beginning for every one of us no going back to the world no going back to the flesh by the power that raised christ from the dead in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen a big congratulations to all of you this is the best decision you would have made in your entire life hallelujah now i'd like you to follow okay this way we're going to follow um, the ushers as they lead you there'll be a group of people to have your names your details and we'll follow you up they'll be very brief so that you come back and join us um, please be very fast with them because we're about to get up to the ministrations right away god bless you thank you for this great decision let's honor them koinonia bless them bless them Let's honor them as they go. Please rise up on your feet. We are going to pray for a few minutes. Hallelujah. We are about to pray for a few minutes. And I want our hearts to be open. Let's participate in the prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. When we pray, hear me, when we pray, we authorize heaven 
to step into our lives. Are we together? This is a miracle service and I want us to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Please media help us. We're about to pray. We're about to pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. It says, call unto me and I will answer. Call unto me and I will answer. It says, and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Call unto me. You see, prayer is a sign of humility because it's an indication that there is so much I do not know and there is so much I cannot do. Are we together? Prayer is a sign of humility. When you call on God to step into your life, it is because you acknowledge that he is able. Lift your voice in one minute and say, Lord, I know you are able. Lift your voice. Come on, pray, pray, pray. We are praying, please. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I believe you are able. That's why I'm here tonight. I believe you are able to heal that cancer, to heal that HIV. Lord, I believe that you are able to give me a new story. I acknowledge you, I recognize you as the mighty God. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are the mighty the great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah, he's the mighty God, you are the great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah, you are the mighty God, the great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Shout it, say in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I declare that every force tying down my life, tying down my destiny, tying down my progress, you come under arrest tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Oh, come on, Koinonia, are you praying? Every force Every force Rakata barato soto pregele bele rebos. Embra kata la kate seketa ba. Seke pras kabarata la badash. Oh, you come under arrest tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, "I set before you this day, blessing and cursing, life and death." But he says, I advise you, choose life so that you and your family will live. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus. I make a decision. Tonight, I make a choice. Tonight, that I must leave this place free. I'd like you to open your mouth and mention the challenges that brought you here. And say, I am determined. I make a decision. I make a decision. 
Shekete karababa karatos. Rekete prekete le koto sotoba. I make a decision. I make a decision. I make a decision. Are you praying? Shabara katalaba. Mambra katalakata. I make a decision. I make a decision. Please pray. Make sure you are praying. I make a decision. I must walk out of here healed tonight. I must walk out of here changed tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Every covenant orchestrated by darkness to keep me limited in life, to keep my family limited in life, Tonight, I declare that this is my night of victory. Lift your voice and cry, cry, cry. Cry unto the God of your salvation. They must be broken. They must be broken. I'm content. I'm content by faith. I'm content by faith. Content by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. I'd like you to pray and say, Every area that is not working, say it every area in my life that is not producing results. Tonight, you come under the influence of the anointing. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Your finances may not be working. Your spiritual life may be working. You are praying your to a new dimension of grace. Shaba karada balada da 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 ba. I we declare your majesty, your majesty, your majesty, your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Your majesty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the instruction the Lord is giving me. Please listen. Let's walk together, guys. Please, let's walk together. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to shout three times. Listen. Hallelujah. Because what I see in the realm of the spirit is like I'm standing on top of this building and I'm seeing like a pot boiling but it's about to tilt. 
that's what i'm saying and the lord is telling me that at the third shout we are going to shout once shout two by the third shout listen the first thing that will happen by the time we take that third shout there will be such an explosion of the power of god a mighty deliverance anointing and that's how we're going to start off tonight are we together it's called a healer it's a mystery it's a mystery that crumbles walls when they went round the walls of jericho they shouted the instrumentalists everybody together hallelujah just be stupid enough to obey this instruction and watch the god of wonders do mighty things in your life you are shouting pain away you are shouting sickness away you are shouting captivity away hallelujah my goodness i'm telling you the power of god is so strong in this place mighty 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 I'm going to count three when I count three listen I want you to shout from the depth of your heart hallelujah and then the second time we are going to shout listen as surely as the God of heaven lives by the third shout in the name of the Lord God whose I am and who has sent me the wonders that will happen in your life by this third shout is a mystery brothers and sisters how God operates are you ready one two three by the hallelujah hallelujah please all those under the anointing just bring them out but really it's from the third time are you ready for number two we're shouting powers out of men's destinies we're shouting thrones dominions that have tied down the lives of men are you ready one two three hallelujah now be sensitive oh i feel it on me here it comes that grace that unction that grace that unction by the third shout hear me angels will begin to move in dramatic ways there will be an eruption of the power of god inside and outside are you ready i make a decree in the realm of the spirit and i pray according to the word of the lord as we make this shout i command thrones i command dominions i command altars and everything tying the destinies of men to give way in the name of the lord jesus are you ready now one two three out shake up mighty things happening to men already i tell you it's like volcano that's what i see in the spirit falling on people falling on people you baby. Wait. 
31 people I see prophetic mantles the mantle of the prophetic the mantle of the prophetic 21 people that's what I see 21 people right now oh God in the name of Jesus wherever they are at the count of three let that mantle fall on them 21 one two three take it take it take it new wine take it prophetic mantle prophetic mantle mantles 21 people stepping into prophetic anointings by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost I activate it I activate it I activate it I stand under this seen in the realm of the spirit James, this is a spirit of limitation lift your hands everyone I want to take authority over this spirit wherever you are inside and outside I like you to get ready if you are in this category something will happen to you let the sword of the spirit part those chains open are you ready I command the chains be broken now be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. There's a family God is liberating. A whole family. They are here. I'm seeing God touch them. Right now. Giving them miracles. hallelujah lift your voice in one minute and say lord speak to me speak to me send a word that will bring me hope send a word Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm hearing the name Memuna. We have to rush. I'm hearing the name Memuna. Is there someone with that name here? Memuna. That's what I'm hearing. Shabakoto Paratoya. Memuna. Outside. Who is that? Memuna, you are outside. Who is that? Come. Look at me. 
Where are you coming from? Huh? I'm looking at you. Listen, look at me. You just came from somewhere here. Huh? Is there a, a mic? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing you enter transport and you are coming from Abuja to come here. Where did you come from? From Abuja. From Abuja. That's where you are coming. Because I look in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing you in a car and you came and I'm seeing you praying and asking God to visit you and visit your family. Is that why you are here? Yes. Your family. You were saying if only you come here, God will visit your family. And God is saying he's bringing a breakthrough to Memuna and her family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break that curse over your family. By the power of the Holy Ghost, it lives forever. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Lift your hands and give Jesus praise. Look at me. Please call the lady again. My dear, where is your mother? Huh? What's she doing? Huh? She's a civil servant. She's a civil servant. We have to pray because the devil wants to put sickness. She's complaining of pains in her body. She went to the hospital. Huh? She may not have told you. She went to the hospital last week and they said she should be careful because she's having problems with her back. Yes. Is that true? Yes. That's what the doctor said that she's having problem with her back. Yes. This is witchcraft. It's not just pain like that. Your mother cannot even watch for 10 minutes. Her yes. back will start paining yes. her. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray for mama right now wherever she is. Let there be a supernatural miracle for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Madam, can I talk to you please? Yes, that madam that one with um, yes please make sure you are praying God is touching people we just want to be fast I wish we had time no 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 you don't have to kneel down please stand up where are you coming from madam from Jigawa Jigawa state Jigawa state yes. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit I'm seeing a woman who has gone through pain and she's crying and I'm wondering why are you going through all of this uh, some of them I may not be able to say it here but you were invited here I'm with my sister. that's what I'm my saying where is here. she I'm seeing two people where is the sister come come and stand hold on I'm hearing the Lord speak to me and saying there are two other people. Yes. There are two other people again yes. that you came with aside from you. Where are they? they, are, they are. Where are they? Two other people. Where are they? Please come and stand. I want to announce to you, all of you, that God will give you a testimony tonight that will surprise you. Please, I want you to believe. I want you to believe me. The things I see, I may not be able to tell you right now because um, one of you has a problem with your husband. I don't want to go into... Hold on. I, should I talk? Do you want me to talk? Calm down. Let me talk to you. You came out. Let me talk. Madam, please look at me. Your husband needs deliverance. You believe what I'm saying? You love God. You are a sincere woman. But your husband needs deliverance. Huh? Where is he? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a woman crying. A man coming to vomit. Huh? Like, I may vomit from drunkenness. And then this thing is telling on you. Huh? Are you a Christian? You love the Lord. I'm seeing you praying for this woman. Yes. Huh? Yes. That's yes, why I asked her, how do I know? You are wearing something. I'm seeing you praying for her. Yes, In fact, sir. even when you stood there, you are saying that God should locate this woman yes, and sir. bless her. Yes, I'm hearing sir. your prayers. The Lord is ministering it to me. And he's saying you should bless her. And the Lord God of heaven is saying he's going to bless her and bless you too. Hold on. Let me talk to you. Will you believe what I tell you? Why am I seeing you in a wedding gown? Are you married? Yes, sir. I'm seeing you in a wedding gown. Listen to me very yes. carefully. And I'm seeing two men standing. Hold on. 
I'm seeing one man and I'm seeing another man. Yes. And the man is saying he married before this one. Yes. He comes to you in a dream. Yes, is that sir. true? Yes, sir. This man I'm talking about, yes, sir. tell me the truth. Now don't be embarrassed. Yes, this has affected your marriage. Stand up. It's time to deliver you. Because I'm seeing you get married and I'm seeing two men. Your real husband and another one in the realm of the spirit. He comes to you in a dream. But the Lord is saying I should set you free. Elohim, you reign. You reign. You reign. showing me a lady you left the hospital this morning your mother is in the hospital it's part of the reasons why you came here please who is that your mother you left her in the hospital and you came here please when you get that person let me pray for her because God wants to do a miracle I want to pray for you the Bible says what God has joined let no man put asunder God did not join you on any spirit entity and he's going to deliver you in the name of Jesus be free let her go now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit madam please look at me your husband needs deliverance his own money finishes on friend and friends and beer is that true is that true, it's true. because I'm seeing him not only drink but buying for his friends and they finish the entire money you are a very kind woman but the truth is he's not giving you even one naira you don't even get money from him but the lord is going to be changing things now let me tell you how it will change it will look as if it's getting worse but you watch and see what god is going to be doing you believe that yes i'm going to pray for you father in the name of jesus christ let there be a miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle a supernatural miracle there is a woman from Katsina. There is a woman from Katsina. A woman from Katsina. That's what I'm seeing. A woman, you are outside. You didn't cover your hair. You are from Katsina. Where is that person? Is there someone like that, please? Where is that person? Why are you clapping? Where is the person? Please come. From Katsina. Look at me. Stand up, stand up, madam. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Look at me. The Lord is saying I should quote a scripture for you. When the Lord again shall turn your captivity, He says you'll be like them that day. Madam, you have cried enough in this miracle service. The God of heaven is about to wipe your tears. Mary. Mary. Who is Mary? Mary. Mary. I know there are many Marys. Hold on, please. Hold on. Let me call the Mary. The Mary is in this row. Mary, you are seated here. No, 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 no. At the back, you are wearing a dark cloth. Right here. You didn't cover your head. The Mary is in. No, like, I don't know if it's a dark cloth. Like, it has flower. It's a gown. It's a gown. Straight down. Gown, not gown with skirt. Is there someone like that? Mary, this row. The angel of the Lord is telling me. Is it a gown or someone? I'm seeing something with flower. Is there someone like that? Please find out. Mary, I need to talk to that person. I need to talk to that person. You're the one? Okay. Well, come, I'll talk to you. Madam, where are you from? I'm from Akwaibo. You are from Akwaibo? I stayed in Katsina. I know. Are you married? Yes. Where is your husband? It's in Katsina. I have to pray for you. God wants to give you breakthrough. My goodness, lift your hands. I'm telling you, I just saw like a wind and the Lord said they are angels. Watch what happens in the congregation right now. Angels, 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 angels bringing impartation to people. I just saw like a wind in the spirit. Angels cutting away things. That's what I'm seeing. Angels cutting away things from people. They are removing things in people's bodies that's what i see like in a slimy substance leaving people 
This is breakthrough, breakthrough. God is giving people breakthrough. Hallelujah. Ma, let me pray for you. What do you do, Ma? Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm looking at this woman. Don't be afraid. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at you. Where is Kasham? I'm looking at you, Ma. And I'm seeing her name on your head. And I was wondering, and the Lord, no, 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 no. Hold on. Come. Come. I'm looking at this woman and, and I'm seeing the name of this lady, Kasham, on her head. And I thought your name is Kasham, but the Lord told me it's not Kasham. The, what she's practicing is what you are now. What, what are you doing? I'm a nurse. What are you doing? I'm a nurse. You're a nurse. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. That's what God is telling me. Because I'm looking at you and I saw her name written on your head. And the Lord said I should call her and make... See, this is not diabolic. Hosea chapter 12. It says, I have spoken to you by the prophet. I have multiplied visions. He said, I have spoken to you in similitudes. This is not jamboree. We have a lot of things to do. God is locating people and... When he's doing it for one, he's doing it for many people. Time will not allow for everybody to be called, but I just want you to believe. Believe in what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that's, the, that's the only reason why you are here. Ma, I want to pray for you. Because I'm seeing the Lord promoting you and lifting you. You believe that? If God grants grace, you will return and testify. Hold my hands, ma. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the God of heaven promote you and lift you right now in the name of Jesus. Ma, I want to pray for you. Where are you from, please? I'm from Anambra, but I'm from Jigawa. I want to pray for you. What do you do? I'm a nurse. I'm a nurse. You are a nurse too. Yes. I want to pray for you. The devil wants to put sickness in your body. And this is not a nice, this is not something I will even say. The devil wants to put it in your body, but will take authority over it right now. Please hold my hands, man. In the name of Jesus, Lord, he will fortify her. I, I command that spirit to leave you right now. Out! The devil wants to put sickness. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ma, look at me. The pain is living and you are going free. You have cried. I have I'm seeing a woman who has cried, but God is stepping in. Hold my hands in the name of Jesus. Lord, the grace that makes things happen. May that grace bring this woman out of pain. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you. Come stand here. I want to pray. There's bad luck in your family. Huh? Serious bad luck. Where's your father? Quara State. Quara State. I'm seeing a man in Quara State just going around in circles, not even doing anything meaningful. We have to pray. It's one thing to move physically, but it's another thing for your life to move too. Huh? And I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus. Please be very serious with the Lord. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka. Emeka. I'm hearing the name of someone. Emeka. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let there be a miracle for you. Let there be a miracle for you. In the name of Jesus. Emeka, the Lord is ministering to me. I'm hearing the name of someone, Emeka. The Lord is giving you a testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Emeka, you are outside. I'm seeing two Emeka coming. I tell you, I see like a screen. One, you have beard. One, you are wearing white. Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign. Elohim, you reign. I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. Don't be, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm seeing the spirit of death on you. The devil wants to destroy your life. We have to pray for you. Sir, look at me. What do you do? You are a student. I'm going to pray for you. You love Jesus and the hand of God is upon your life. Huh? It's not just an ambition for business.
but the anointing of God is in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sir, I need to pray for you. I need to pray for you and destroy something that wants to kill you. Huh? So it's just a simple prayer. I'll pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm, we're not prophesying doom. You get what I'm saying? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that thing to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness, it leaves you right now. Sir, hold my hands. I pray that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon your life right now. Step into a new level of grace by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not by power, it's not by might. I bring an anointing to your life that takes you to a new dimension. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a lady who is going to shout under the anointing. Just carry her like that and bring her to me. There is a word. No, it's inside here, it's not outside. Right here, carry her like that and bring her. It's a message. Just carry her like that and bring her. This is what I see in the realm of the spirit. As she's lying down like this, that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. And I'm hearing Ezekiel 2 verse 2. It says, and the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet. The Lord is bringing not just deliverance to you, and your family but the lord is bringing i'm hearing the word restoration and the lord is saying i should prophesy to you receive it in the name of jesus it comes upon you by the power of the holy spirit please bring this lady for me just just carry her carefully if she can please lift your voice and pray and say lord visit me in the name of the lord jesus christ I break every hole you have with her life in the name of Jesus I'm looking at a lady in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing a spirit wearing a crown and the Lord is saying he's removing that crown that's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit this is a lady who loves God but I see her connected to things that have to do with marine powers and I'm seeing the lady with a crown and the Lord is taking it in the name of Jesus Christ I command freedom right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I command freedom right now be free go let her go now by the blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands I want to pray before we pray for the sick there's something the Lord is showing me please I like you to lift your hands just do what I'm asking you to do lift your hands the power of God is going to come on certain people I'm seeing deliverance in families this is not just you you are standing for your loved ones i'm seeing mighty deliverances happening in families and the lord is saying one more time we should shout that name jesus in the name of the lord jesus as we shout jesus i like you to shout all your heart at the count of three the moment you do that i see deliverance coming to families and what they could not do in many years will be done within one month what they could not do in many years will be done within one month in the name of Jesus one two three right now deliverance 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 Shakataba. families I command it inside and outside inside and outside Deliverance, what could not be done in 10 years, in 10 years, it will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. What could not be done in 10 years will be done in one month. Hallelujah. Self time in the name of Jesus. Say it in the name of Jesus. Every door stopping me from entering the next level. Right now, I command that door broken. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Pray yourself to the next dimension. Doors are opening. 
pray inside and outside doors are opening doors are opening doors are opening Hallelujah. 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 Listen, many of you may not understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit, but you see, the presence of God is where change happens in the life of men. Just like this, you will walk out and you will see things happen in your life. Just like this. There are chains that tie men. There are chains that hold down destinies. There are chains. Please bring this lady for me. Yes, this lady. Just this very lady. Just bring her. I keep the chains falling. Hey, I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I keep the chains. I hear the chains, I hear the chains. There is power in the name of Jesus. Deliverance is coming for you. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. Hallelujah. Uh, Jimmy, the Lord is giving me a word. I saw an eagle flying, and the eagle came and entered you. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's restoring to you the spirit of prophecy. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. He's restoring to you. I saw an eagle fly, and it entered you. And the Lord is saying he's restoring the spirit of prophecy. 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 Hallelujah. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing people carry load. And God is saying I should bring down that load. Lift your hands. Lord, where are they carrying loads that do not belong to them? right now at the count of three let that load come off you right now one two three right now right now right now anyone carrying any load every load every load every load every load every load every load that is not of god Every load that is not of God. Every load that is not of God must leave you. Must leave you. Must leave you. Must leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we are going to be very fast. Hallelujah. I was walking and the Lord said I should go back. Praise the Lord. Please don't mind me. Just allow me to do what the Lord is saying. And the Lord is saying I should walk right here. Outside. Right and go outside. Please hear me. And the Lord is saying as I walk. For every road that I pass. If there is a spirit holding your destiny. It must leave you. Please believe me. I lift my hands right now. Right now as I'm passing. The anointing of the spirit is touching people. Destroying yokes, destroying yokes, destroying yokes right now, destroying yokes from my left and my right, destroying yokes, any spirit tying down any man's destiny right now, 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 right now. 
right now right now right now right now every spirit every spirit every spirit every spirit now listen to me those outside don't be afraid it will not rain but watch this lift your hands I'm going to walk this way and the power of the Holy Ghost you are enduring this rain as I walk through any spirit tie your life must give way right now are you ready right now right now right now right now right now I release everybody from bondage 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 right now I stretch my hands I stretch my hands I stretch my hands right now I stretch my hands I stand by an anointing as I pass your row any devil tying you will let you go right now as I pass your row as I pass as I as I pass your row as I pass your row now right for your limitation you are enduring the rain you cannot go back the same I came out to join you hallelujah please make sure you pray I'm moving around we are going to pray for you. Please lift your hands. Make sure you are praying. There's no spirit that will stand. Hallelujah. As many who can come in, don't worry. Just push them in. I know it will be a bit stuffy, but push as many people everywhere and let's pray we have to hurry up just push them as many there are some who may not be able to do much but then we are praying we are praying say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding me say it again in the name of Jesus every power holding my breakthrough tonight your time is up go 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 lift your voice and pray pray every power every force Hallelujah. Now, hold on. I know that there are so many people coming in. Just give them room to come in. Just make every adjustment. Not all may be able to come in, but it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. We want to pray for the sick now. Now, please be careful so we don't have people marching on people. Hallelujah. We are going to do two things at the same time. All those who came trusting God for healing, now is your time. Please walk with the protocol, walk with the ushers. I'm going to ask you to come out and stand here. Don't match the people in front. While they are doing that, ushers, begin to pass your prayer request. Begin to pass your prayer request. There are miracles. In the name of Jesus, there are breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus, there is healing. In the name of Jesus, 
to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Power to break every chain, break every chain. I sense a strong healing anointing, a strong healing anointing entering this building. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 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 Hallelujah. Now we're going to minister to the sick. Please hear me. No matter what the situation is, as you stand right here, I want you to believe God for healing. You've heard the testimonies of people. You've seen the things that God is doing in this place. Don't make the place rowdy. Just be orderly as we pray for you. Just a touch and you return back. We may not have the time to take testimonies. Hallelujah. Please say to me, you will join me. Where's Pastor Jakes? I'm glad to have them around and they'll make this work easy. The anointed people, as we pray for you, I want you to believe God for healing. The moment you are prayed for, as you walk back to your seat, do what you couldn't do before. Don't just sit down and hope you are healed the bible says they came to hear and to be healed they came to hear and to be healed everyone lift your hands in one minute and pray and say every sickness in my body is time for you to go every incurable disease go ahead and pray every incurable disease you are living. Hallelujah. Worship team, you help us while we minister, Pastor Jakes. Watch me, please. We are going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want you to believe in the God that heals. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Make sure you are praying in tongues. Don't just be whiling away time. Drop your prayer request and be praying. Pray in the Spirit and say, Lord, you are going to visit me. as a God of wonders. Hallelujah. Our time is spent, but I want you to make sure that you participate. We're going to pray on this right now. And then afterwards, um, I'm going to prophesy over our lives. Then we'll take a few announcements and we'll be done. I want you to maximize the night so that you don't go back and return the same. Hallelujah. Before I pray, I, I want, if you can rise, please rise. Those on, under the anointing, that's all right. And then mothers with children, that's all right. But the rest of us, please, let's rise and take this very seriously. We're going to be praying right now. When Pastor Jakes and Ejimi are done, they can come and join us. We'll pray. Pastor Godwin, where are you? Please, can you come and join us? Um, we're going to pray. I'd like you to stretch your hands here and in one minute pray like your life depends on it and say the same way i have dropped this that's how i've dropped every challenge in my life i'd like you to pray please pray koinonia open your mouth inside outside online please join us we're going to lay our hands prophetically on these requests 
as we lay our hands on them we are releasing the power of God to every home to every territory in the name of the Lord Jesus make sure you pray from the depth of your heart father we agree with you we agree with you all kinds of miracles impossible situations make sure you are praying there is a God that answers prayers let fire fall on this request to God shakata prakata Pray, prophesy. We are speaking over this request. Wipe the tears of people, oh God. Visit individuals. Visit families. Strange miracles. Strange miracles. again the second time Allah do taka boba baba shota inga dua ika tula katia mama makada dusa ika deda baba inka it is done it is done says the spirit of God it is done oh glory be to God go ahead and rejoice and give God praise hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Please lift your hands and receive the prophecy. This is where God is going to be changing lives. Hallelujah. Your destiny can change overnight because one word was received. Prophecy does not only reveal, it creates. This is where everybody gets to participate in the service take it high guys inside outside this is where I want you to believe you will rise in his name I don't know you reign you will ago I had a very serious encounter with God and the Lord told me something he said I have put my word in your mouth as you speak it I will make it happen that's what the Lord told me please I want you to believe it oh blessed is she that believes don't sit down and doubt and waste your time there is a spiritual dimension to life it's not just I have taught you principles Believe me when I tell you there is a spiritual dimension. Gates 
and doors over the lives and the destinies of men. I pray every gate that must be open right now I speak to you Efata be open now 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 that chain tying any man's destiny tying the speed of your progress you are moving but you're not making impact right now I release upon you an auction for speed an auction take it an auction for speed an auction for speed the Bible says and the hand of the Lord please help them the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah he gathered his loins and ran on barefoot he overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel I don't know what you have done from January to now but I prophesy from now till the end of June do what you have not done in five years shake it -te -te do what you have not done in five years do what you have not done in five years hallelujah Jacob dug a well and they covered it they dug another one they covered it they dug the third one and they left it and they called it Rehoboth they said God has given us our space where you have been begging for relevance it's like there is no place for you in life it's like there is no place I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle take your place in life take your place in destiny Take your place in ministry. Take your place in destiny. Take your place in ministry. Ay, 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 ay. Whatever has covered your glory, whatever has covered your glory, I stand tonight. I invoke the powers of the heavens and I command, let your glory be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Anyone here called jobless? Between now and the next two months, I don't care what is the reason, but I pray as surely as the God of heaven lives, we give you a job here now. We give you a job here now. We give you a job here now. He says to appoint unto them that morning Zion. Listen, there are some of us, you are making progress, but no help in your life. You fight for everything by yourself. You pay for everything by yourself. When you are in trouble, there's nobody to speak for you at the gates. Where are your helpers? Who stopped them from entering your life? Who said it must be this hard? Rekata bakata. I go down on my knees. I call your helpers by prophecy in the name of Jesus from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west from the north to the south to the east to the west receive of their ministry. Listen. Let me tell you, there is nothing more tragic as having no helper. No man can stand alone. You need voices to speak to you at the gates of destiny. You need men to endorse you and say, help him. You can't have to explain yourself to everybody. Who is speaking for you? 
I pray again whoever must appear in your life from now till June business help us financial help us marital help us career help us I call you forth I call you forth hallelujah listen lift your hands there are some of you your dreams and visions used to be opportunities for intense revelation where God will show you secrets it made your life easy till something shot you from visions and dreams I pray every dead dream life every dead manifestation of visions like a mantle receive restoration now restoration of dreams prophetic dreams visions prophetic vision hallelujah please stretch your hands towards me please stretch your hands towards me the hands of a man represents your responsibility represents your wisdom represents your agency for bread i pray for you whatever has mocked the creativity of your hands so that your potentials are underutilized isaiah 48 verse 17 i am the lord that teacheth thy hands to profit i pray the grace that makes your hand productive take it now take it now take it now take it now the grace that makes your hand multiply take it now everything called barren in your destiny physical barrenness spiritual barrenness academic barrenness career barrenness right now I cause the spirit of barrenness from his root and I command be fruitful be fruitful be fruitful hallelujah lift your hands in the next one minute I want us to pray because everyone will receive something listen listen what we're all receiving is an upgrade of grace listen he said grace be multiplied grace and peace be multiplied the grace upon a man's life can multiply should multiply must multiply there are three things that happen to you when god lifts you one he multiplies your grace two he adds to your responsibility three he increases your territory of influence both spiritually and physically i pray for you lift your hands some of us you have not backslidden but you've not risen beyond certain levels you have stayed there at a level everything that is alive grows please i want you to receive i told you this meeting will have impartations the impartation is not falling on the ground and rolling impartation is receiving something tangible in your spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift he said to the end that he be established I pray for you lift your hands every grace that is dormant in your life every grace that is useful but it has stayed at a level and is made no matter how you try to rise it stands there in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic office I pray for you may that grace be upgraded now receive it receive it take it an upgrade of favor an upgrade of wisdom an upgrade of power 
fire power fire fire prayer fire what fire prayer fire what fire an upgrade of supernatural wisdom an upgrade of access access to men of influence I pray for you listen what your current level of grace could not bring you into I empower you to go back and conquer that realm oh let me repeat what I'm saying there are levels in life and there are graces that are like keys you can get to a level and be stuck there no matter what kind of deliverance you can stay there because graces are like flights they can take you beyond certain levels some of us just need a little upgrade to overcome the obstacles you have tried prayer has brought you so far i pray for you whatever dimension must be added so that you can fly like the eagle that you are receive that dimension now receive that dimension now receive that dimension now hallelujah the bible says and you shall be called with a new name which the mouth of the lord shall speak it says you shall be called hefziba and pula a well desired land i pray for you everything that makes people run away from you they plan to help you but when they come they change their mind they plan to bless you but when they see you they consider what they are about to sow there is a spirit that cut short breakthroughs i pray for you in the name of jesus i pray the blessing that was prophesied he said to jacob the smell of my son is like the field that the lord has blessed that aura that attracts favor receive it right now receive it right now whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise may that prayer be answered let me say it again whoever vowed and said it is through his dead body you will rise I said may that prayer be answered listen the Bible says in five things the Lord will deliver you he said yes six he will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men it was a revelation that was given Job that men stay and use their tongues to trap the destinies of men I pray for you whoever has used his tongue like a net to trap your life I release you right now I release you right now I release you right now hallelujah the kind of finances your hands has not touched I pray for you between now and the end of this month may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes may God do something that must bring tears from your eyes anyone here marked for death that death is eyeing you waiting for the day you will get on the road waiting for the day a bike will come close to you to kill you and take your life I pray for you in the name of Jesus we forbid the earth from receiving your body we forbid the earth from receiving your body there are five elements I'm rounding up that are the conduits through which the supernatural finds expression on earth five elements all through scripture the supernatural cannot manifest on earth without the instrumentality of these five elements number one is light God is light the entrance of thy word give it light let there be light number two water the fish and the birds of the air in Genesis came out of water water represents abundance number three fire hallelujah it's a mysterious instrument not threatened by any other element yet refines every other number four wind the mystery of sound 
the mystery that takes sounds and realities he said I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound that sound came back in Acts chapter 2 a sound hallelujah and the last element is the earth the prophet said O earth hear ye the word of the Lord he said for from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return hear me I want to pray just one deep mystery for you the earth is a universal point of contact every man makes contact with it for you to be alive you must make contact with the earth your feet must touch the ground your helper's feet is touching this ground you are touching no 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 no. it's not amen it's a mystery the office where you are to be employed is on this ground it's not in the air hear me please the bank that holds the favor you are looking for has contact with this earth and the prophet said oh earth you are a living thing you are not just stones hallelujah are we together hmm. it says they will not be able to oppress you because you have made a covenant with the stones hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you